Good morning, everybody, to St. Peter's Quarter Bid Renewal Event 2021, SPQ and Beckett Well. I'm in Ferguson, Strategic and Development Director for Partnerships for Better Business, which manages, develops and supports bids across the UK. We've had the privilege of working with the SPQ bid since its creation in 10 years ago. I'm going to be your host this morning. Although the last year has been challenging for us all, this morning's event aims to be looking at one of the key opportunities to St Peter's Quarter area, which is already emerging and will make a significant difference to Beckett Well, its immediate surrounding area and the city as a whole. This morning, our key speaker is Paul Morris from St James's Securities, who will take you through the scheme and its exciting potential and indeed the reality. We will then have an opportunity to ask questions about Beckett Well development and the bid itself. You may add a question at any time as it comes to mind during this morning's event by using the Q&A function at the bottom of your toolbar, and we will then try to cover as many questions as possible during the Q&A session itself. First of all, I want to introduce you to the chair of the board of St Peter's Quarter Bid. The board of St Peter's Quarter Bid comes from a cross section of businesses in the area who give their time voluntarily to represent your interests. Helen Wathall, MBE, is the managing director of Wathall's Funeral Directors. Helen is the fifth generation of a family to head up Wathall's Funeral Directors and became chair of St Peter's Quarter Bid in November 2016. Five years ago, Helen. <laughs> Helen was awarded the MBE in 2019 for her services to business and the local community. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Helen Wattle. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ian. Um, yes, yeah, so and where has that five years uh, gone? It's, uh, it's flown by. Um, so, good morning and, uh, and welcome to the launch of the uh, third St Peter's Court of Renewal, uh, giving us plenty of time before the current bid ends <laughs> to capture what the needs of the area are now, ready to plan for the five years from 2022 to 2027. The end of the current bid is, uh, is nearing, so this is the new beginnings of, of an opportunity to shape the new bid plan for a new era, specifically in our area of the Derby City Centre. The bid is your bid and uh, everyone has the opportunity to, to shape it um, during the next few months and beyond. The last 12 months have been the most challenging of times for all of us, uh, no matter what your sector is. But now, uh, as we start to climb out of the lockdown and get back to a hopefully steadier way of living and working with COVID, it also presents exciting prospects ahead for St Peter's Quarter. We want to encourage everyone to get involved in some way, no matter how small, in shaping the new plan. There will be opportunities to, to engage uh, with the bid through surveys, through working groups, uh, through events. Um, and uh, I urge all of you uh, that have an interest or a, a comment or a suggestion to, to contact the bid through the team um, of Ashley and Danny to talk through your ideas and views at any time. Uh, you can also contact me. Uh, uh, with that too. So for now, thank you for joining us uh, and I'll hand you back over to, to, to Ian for, for more insights. Thank you, Helen. Thank you. So there have already been a number of reports and commentaries about uh, the last year and how the reactions to the pandemic have created major challenges for businesses in town and city centres. Words such as unprecedented and accelerated are being used a lot in commentary about the commercial world. But these probably sum up the key challenges and trends faced by businesses 
and with this comes uncertainty about the future. However, many of the trends we're seeing have already started before COVID. Many commentators have said that the, tr the trends have moved five years in the space of 10, 10 months. But the biggest consequence of this for businesses is the severe pressure on cash flow, the need to restructure business to deliver products and services in new ways, and then deliver new services. And some are in a situation where this rapid change has put into the question their own ability to survive. This obviously has an impact on the nature of businesses attracted to and who can operate from a changing city centre. The growth in online retail is already having an impact in town and city centres before COVID, with large units such as BHS some years ago and more recently Debenhams vacating their properties. The acceleration of growth in online retail from 20% pre-COVID to 50% during COVID simply represents an even greater structural challenge for town and city centres. This in turn has presented a big challenge for landlords who are offering rent deals simply to keep their units occupied. And pressures on housing has already been there before COVID, but a challenge for the immediate future will be to ensure that residents and businesses in city centres can coexist in harmony and benefit from each other rather than being at odds with each other. So there will be a need to manage and support the change for businesses and city centres themselves and generate the confidence and funds needed to ensure that market forces play a role in securing a vibrant future rather than undermining it. Getting that balance right between addressing the immediate financial pressures of landlords and getting the right investment for a long-term vibrant city centre will be about ensuring that people can work together for the same vision. The changes in the way we live and work are also presenting opportunities. Some home working will be here to stay. Offices will be different in scale, the way they're fitted out, and even where they are located. In COVID, it was the larger city centres with higher proportions of office space, which were actually worst hit, with reductions in footfall as people with long commutes stayed at home. But actually, for many, this has improved the work-life balance which many could, did, do not want to lose and increased people's interest in their local towns rather than where their office is based. And certainly large corporates were already starting to split up their teams into regional and smaller offices before COVID. But there are some serious reviews by corporate property managers taking place now, considering even more radical reductions in single office space occupancy. With this improved work-life balance comes an increased desire for open space in city centres and more place to spend leisure time. Before COVID, Bill Grimsey had already pleaded guilty to being one of the retail chief executives who had contributed to Clone Town Britain and was promoting the need for town centres to be more individual. The opportunity for town and city centres to embrace this has never been greater. So the prospects for town, excuse me, towns and smaller city centres like Derby with a rich heritage are potentially very promising. The vibrant town centre of the future will be not one which is led by retail and large format stores, but it will be a place where all residents of the town and city itself and the surrounding area will find something to appeal to them all. It will be the hub for the whole community of the city centre and its surrounding area as the ability to live, work and play takes on new ways, new meanings and new values in society. I now want to introduce you to a, uh, a move to a, a really exciting prospect for St Peter's Quarter and Derby as a whole. The long time derelict space of Beckett Well. Uh, and to talk about this exciting and much needed development is Paul Morris. He's Development Director of the Property Development and Urban Regeneration Specialist St James's Securities. Paul is a chartered surveyor with over 30 years experience in commercial property, having been active in the development field since 2007. And prior to that, as a director and head of agency for Lambert Smith Hampton. 
Whilst being involved in the entire development process, Paul's core skills include sourcing and negotiating land acquisitions, design development, tenant preletting, and with a particular expertise in funding and deal structuring. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Paul Morris. Thanks Ian. Um, I hope everybody can see me and I'll just try to share my screen as well um, to pull up the uh, presentation. Um, well, hello everybody. Yes, in this COVID world, it would have been very nice to have uh, actually presented and seen many of you in public, but uh, my trips to Derby have been somewhat curtailed over the last year. Um, so instead of running up 30,000 miles, I've probably done six trips in, in total. Uh, and I'm really looking forward, as I'm sure everybody else is, to, um, <laughs> to being able to, to come and see people once again. Um, but turning to Beckettwell, over the, the last year, we've been working incredibly uh, hard, uh, even though we haven't been down as, as regularly, in terms of uh, advancing the scheme. So today's presentation, for those of you who might have seen some in the past, I've updated it and uh, there's quite a lot of exciting news to, to let you uh, hear about um, uh, and explain where we're going and what's going to be happening in the in the forthcoming 12 months or so. So the first picture for those of you who will only be too familiar with is the big hole in the ground. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, so when we first looked at this area of dereliction um, and much unloved, desperately seeking investment. Um, so to us, that was a fantastic opportunity and one which we believe is truly transformative to this area of the city and the city itself. Um, Okay, so I will try to flick over. So again, uh, for those of you who don't know us, um, we are a privately owned property development company established in 1982, uh, Leeds based, and we have a long um, track record in bringing forward um, uh, urban regeneration schemes. The photograph there is in St Paul's Place, Sheffield, um, but we've won awards for the Round Foundry in Leeds and Wakefield Waterfront as well, to name but a few. So <clears throat> Beckettwell, as a prospect for us, uh, fit very nicely into, into what we love to do, um, longer term shifting uh, and refocusing city centres through urban regeneration. So live, work and play. I mean, uh, Ian, I saw had it on, uh, was one of his last slides. <clears throat> and that is um, the mantra that all cities and towns are gonna have to look to work to refocus on. Um, COVID has accelerated the pace of change, the change in face in retail, um, but cities and towns need to adapt and they were going to need to adapt anyway. And when we were looking at uh, bringing uh, a scheme together for this site, that was the concept. It should be bringing people back into the city centre to live there so that they would work there and play through cultural uh, eating out, meeting up with people, music, so on and so forth. So that our mantra, uh, I'm very uh, uh, regularly uh, stomping it out to people because that is the ethos uh, behind the design elements that we've got. <clears throat> Excuse me. So for those, I mean, you, you'll know the site, you all um, will have uh, walked past it many times, but when you start looking at the statistics, it's really quite surprising. It's nearly six acres in total, which represents about three and a half percent of the city centre. Opportunities in cities to, to have uh, to pull together sites to create that much uh, as a percentage of the centre is very unusual these days. So it is it is a huge opportunity for the city to be able to, um, uh, to, to actually refocus. So yeah, it was an area of gradual e economic and social deprivation. You all know uh, the uses that were there and, and what, is, um, uh, what is currently left on the ground, which is the demolished, uh, 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 former precinct and, and now the uh, the Debs is down as well. Other than that, we've got the extant 1960s buildings on Collier Street. So why? This is pre-COVID, this um, this slide, but but it's it's very relevant. Why 
has um, this area suffered so much. The success of Pride Park over the previous 25 plus years has meant that lots of businesses, commerce moved out of the city centre. Uh, the retail uh, elements, and it's still showing into it, should be Derby and now, um, but what is an inward facing box of retail, prime retail, had all moved to the southeastern uh, side of the centre. Um, and uh, as a result, had left areas that had just uh, been left to go to waste, quite frankly. So our intention was to try to turn that round and reverse it by bringing people to live back in the city centre, to work back in the city centre and to spend their, their, their time um, uh, and leisure time back in the city centre. City centre living had been around, but the majority of it that seems to have taken place to date has been conversions of existing <clears throat> uh, former office stock. So the quality is OK, but it's not up to the standard that um, that people are expecting these days. And what really excited us about the city when we first came to look at it was your overall demographic. Fantastic up there with advanced manufacturing, good quality wages, um, but everybody seemed to be spending their money out with Derby and certainly out with the centre. And we wanted to help to try to reverse that trend. And part of that was establishing um, true build to rent apartments, really high quality in a very good, um, <clears throat> well-considered uh, um, uh, public realm setting. So when we started looking at how do we, um, how do we, approach this in terms of a master planning exercise what was quite obvious is that a lot of the site was hidden away certainly from Victoria Street because of those buildings that ran along the frontages so we wanted to at the heart of this create some really high quality public realm in terms of a, a new public square and then create um, permeability going north south and east and west um, with a high quality uh, setting of buildings of different character and different heights, respecting the um, the, the, the edge of the uh, conservation area on Green Lane, knitting it through into the area that we've called Summerhill Yard, and then coming up to a more urban and um, grade A type offices uh, shown in the middle. So in terms of the work, you know, this is three years in the making already, and uh, it takes an awful long time to bring development through. <clears throat> Um, a lot of thought has to go into the actual master planning of it, but also there's the planning. So we pulled together a planning application, which is the red line that you can see on that slide, um, which was an outline application um, uh, uh, for a mix of uses and then a detailed application for the new public square. We got consent for the master plan in um, <clears throat> excuse me, in 2020. And then we went in with a new detailed application for the um, for the phase one reserve matters uh, of the apartments, which were granted in January 2021. So we now have what is effectively a detailed consent for the apartments and the new public square. So this is the master plan and it, and it will evolve. It is there to respect and follow the market. So we've set out uh, our goals for the first phase, which on here is shown as site one and site seven. So site one is the build to rent apartments, 259 of those. They are fully funded and we will be able to make an announcement shortly as to who the fund is. And site seven, which is the new public square, again, that heart, the beating heart of the, of the scheme. Um, which was funded by the LEP and uh, Derby City Council and as the site will be owned by the City Council. So what we've got in the remainder of the make of their site two, three, four, going over to six, is our aspiration in terms of different building types. So from site two, we're showing a mixture of lower rise, more traditional uh, built um, uh, serviced offices, um, at, also with uh, around the subordinate square, which is um, Summerhill Yard. Also, we're going to reuse some of the Victorian buildings in there. So respecting the historic fabric and knitting it into the new scheme. Site three is um, shown there as grade A office space. So there's about 100,000 square feet of grade A office space. And to the rear of that, we've got 
uh, a hotel, 150 bed hotel, and then a small amount of residential on the corner. Site four is the performance venue, the work that we've been doing to um, provide Derby with a new arena, three and a half thousand capacity, and to the south of that, the um, multi-storey car park. And then site six has always been our aspirational, iconic building, an aero engine, um, which will, you know, really provide wayfinding to this site and uh, and, and and gives a, a, a very good uh, sort of respect to the heritage of Derby through Rolls-Royce. So what have we got at the moment? <clears throat> well, that is a photograph I think that was taken last week. So on the ground, we've been doing quite a lot, albeit all demolition, but that's got to be done uh, to clear the way. So the Debenhams demolition was completed last year. This, as you can see, is the looking down to the back of the former Central United Reform Church. So we started the demolition in that last month, um, which will be the site of our new public square. The former Pennine Hotel and Brannigan's, that demolition will start in earnest uh, this late, later on this month. And then the final elements of the main part of the demo are on the 1960s buildings of Lorry House, the multi-storey car park, the pink coconut and the casino, which we're due to start in the spring of next year on that. So a lot happening and a lot has happened. Uh, this is, you know, this much as people say it's not building coming out the ground, but there is an awful lot of money being spent in clearing these sites to make way for the cranes. So the elements that we will be bringing forward, St. James's Square here. So, de you know, this is much, much needed green space in the city. Um, this really does open up the site. It provides visibility and it's inviting. It's bringing people off Victoria Street and from the south from uh, Macklin Street down into uh, a very nice place for people to sit, relax, have some lunch. Um, and, uh, it's all about placemaking and it's to do with the quality as well. So we're really, um, you know, we're very pleased with, with where, this is, uh, where this is going in the design. It's also key to have the relationship to the build to rent building, which you can see on the left-hand side of the screen. And both the build to rent and the public square will be delivered at the same time. That, that's very important. Um, so the demolition of the, the church commenced in February, 2021. And this is what will replace it. <clears throat> so phase one are the 259 built to rent apartments. We've got commercial units at the ground floor, um, a residential amenity uh, at ground floor. So there'll be um, uh, lounge uh, space, live work space, and also a rooftop garden as well for use of the, uh, of the residents. Uh, the anticipated start on site is May of this year. We hope to have cranes coming out of, you know, on the skyline of Derby um, by this spring. Um, and it is on, we are, we are on programme at the moment for doing that with practical completion of the new public square and phase one in February of 2023. That's another view. So that's a bird's eye view looking down, looking east towards the build to rent apartments and the new square with on the right hand side, the grade A office building that we can see. So another, some very good views here, view from the Strand, the one on the left hand side, and then that which is uh, coming along Victoria Street as well, looking west. Um, we also kept some curve there um, to respect the, the previous building that was there, that goes onto Green Lane. Um, so, you know, really quite transformative to what has been there and what uh, and what is currently there at the uh, at the moment. And then the arena proposals, again, very exciting. We've sat and we worked, waited whilst decisions were being made by Derby City Council over the future of the assembly rooms. And uh, the decision was made back in January last year that the refurbishment of the assembly rooms wouldn't take place. We were very quick to come up to the plate and say, well, we'd like to put a, a proposal forward where the private sector delivers here um, and de-risks it fully for the, uh, for the City Council. And that's exactly what we've done. So we have come forward with the proposals. It went to Cabinet um, in summer last year and was approved at Cabinet to, uh, 
to, to purchase the completed building with a long-term operator tenancy in, uh, in situ for 25 years. And I'm pleased to say that we have now concluded the operator procurement. So even in this very difficult time <clears throat> of COVID where we did have you know, concerns that how focused would operators be on looking at new opportunities uh, in the middle of a, you know, a pandemic when all of their other venues were closed um, was, uh, was unfounded. We, you know, we, we had really good um, levels of engagement from operators and we will be very shortly able to announce the, the operator who's been chosen. Um, which will be fantastic news for the city. So we are seeking to su submit a reserve matters planning application by the summer of this year for the new um, uh, performance venue. We've got the full design team ready um, and we hope to be on site with the demolition, as I've already said, by the spring of 2022. And then the ant anticipated practical completion date uh, in the uh, quarter four, 2024. But this is a game changer for Beckett Well. Uh, it really does help to turbocharge the delivery of everything else, because on the back of this, the confidence is there from <clears throat> the hotel operators, of which already we've received uh, calls from three major operators on the back of the potential for the arena that they'd like to see 150 bed um, uh, hotels here and all great names as well which is really really encouraging so i put the new beating heart of derby it is part of it but in terms of just some of the key points here by april of this year we will have had committed investment of 85 over 85 million pounds which is phenomenal particularly in the current climate um as I've said, you know, the live, work and play, the apartments, the offices, and then the arena, all a part of our original vision. And this is so important. Um, we see huge potential, not just in Beckettwell, but in Derby. And the ability to concentrate efforts, our efforts, the city council's efforts, and hopefully business efforts into Beckettwell will mean that the, the spin-off uh, investment uh, options for the rest of the city are phenomenal. Um, with this amount of investment going in right, you know, right next to the bid, this is all the part of the bid area. It is absolutely fantastic. Um, we, we believe on the back of this that investors will take the city even more seriously than we did. You know, I think we have come in with a, a leap of faith here, but one that has been proven. Uh, and it can only bode very, very well. The, the world is changing, the way we operate a change, um, but we believe that this is the first step coming out of the uh, COVID situation um, for something very, very positive for the city. So I'm very much looking forward to welcoming, uh, coming back on with the rest of the uh, uh, of the guests here and, and, and hearing any questions that you've got. Um, okay, I'll stop sharing now. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Um, incredible. Very exciting. And it's uh, those visuals um, make it look so real. Um, in fact, it, it looks as though they are actually taken today. <laughs> um, and it wasn't raining um so yeah great uh, really exciting stuff Good. so um there's now an opportunity um to ask um questions um of paul and indeed um helen i want to welcome back helen wathel um and also ashley lewis our senior bid project manager of uh, partnerships for better business who is also the bid manager of st peter's quarter welcome back helen and welcome ashley um, so please feel free to use uh, the Q&A function at the bottom of your toolbar if you wish to raise anything. We'll try and answer as many questions uh, as we can over the next few minutes. Um, first of all, um, Helena, I, I'm in as chair of um, St Peter's Quarter bid and um, sort of, you know, the, the day when um, St Peter's Quarter was called the bit in the middle. <laughs> I don't think it'll be that going forward, do you? I and mean, what do you think of Paul's presentation? Uh, well, and now I think, um, you yeah, know, uh, in the nine years now that the bit has been running, um, 
uh, we have gone from the bit in the middle to, 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 to an area that um, uh, has a voice and uh, we are able to um, uh, act on behalf of people that are in the area uh, in, um, uh, with the council and yeah, with developments like this. It made me smile actually. So, so I have actually lived and worked and played in Beckettwell all my life. Uh, um, I, I, I lived there as a child, I played on the, on the streets uh, and I've been working uh, working there for far too long now. Um, I'm not that old. I've been there 36 years. I'm definitely not that old. And, and uh, uh, to see words being used or to hear words being used like potential and uh, investment and uh, and all of that for for uh, our area, uh, which is part of the St Peter's Court a bit, is just uh, the most amazing news. And uh, I'm really pleased that, that finally we are part of uh, the city centre vision for the future. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a long time coming. And I, I think that it will impact across the whole bid area and then into the wider city centre very quickly uh, once it gets going. Yeah, that, that's the thing, isn't it, Helen? I mean, it, it, it will be a, almost a shot in the arm for the rest of the area. It's not just that, that area itself, which has been derelict for so many years, but it's the surrounding area as well. It, it, it's surely going to have an impact, don't you think? Uh, definitely, definitely. With um, uh, with yeah, greater footfall uh, brings uh, more shops, uh, uh, yeah, and, and sort of different different shops. The high street, I think, is going to change uh, post post COVID, uh, most most definitely. Uh, and creating footfall within a city centre uh, to me is 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 the way that we can adapt and change around the the, the changes that have been forced upon us uh, with the pandemic. Um, and yeah, to have apartments uh, going up first, well, it creates the footfall which we need um, to, to re regenerate the area into what it's going to become. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Paul, it's great to hear that you've already had some some real interest from from operators of the hotels and uh, mm. uh, and <clears throat> the fact that this sort of this mix of of the uh, of the residential, the the arena, the um, the office space, the, the hospitality, that the sort of how do you see that happening in reality in this new world that we're moving into? I mean, that, surely that's going to create a very dynamic um, will be. Uh, area, it, won't it? it? it it's, it's about, I mean, uh, again, this is this is not just about St. Peter's or Beckett, but this is every town and city in the country is having to, to, to really think how do we refocus our centres and how we use them? People have got to live there. You've got to get people in. I mean, it was like reversing the trend from what had happened post the Industrial Revolution, when everybody went out to the suburbs. But I can look at some, you know, you go to some of the major cities in the UK and you can see the difference. I remember having arrived in Leeds, 89, 1990, and the council had set its vision by the mid-90s for a cafe culture and also to encourage people to develop in the centre and within a space of it wasn't that many years the difference is phenomenal having people live there they do they want to go out for something to eat the local shops uh, and it is a it's a mix of shops it's a change in shops you know the days of just walking past a savers and primark people are bored rigid with it they can get it online it's cheap what they want is independent retail there is no doubt about it and independent retail comes on the back of footfall so you've got beautiful streets sadly gate you know and it's terribly sad sometimes you can stand there and there's nobody there so Sorry, I, and this is about, I, I am impassioned about it because you've got to have people live there. But also during the day, you need people who are working there. They go out for their bite to lunch, pick up a coffee or do a little bit of shopping. And I am unashamed now. I think the city council are sick to death of me saying this. And I, and I don't wish to sound like that bloody awful man, Donald Trump, but it's, it's not America first, it's Beckett well first. Everything in Derby has to be now Beckett well first. It's not, oh, well, we'll do a quick office over here and we'll do that over there. You've got, we, we all together have to make sure that this happens and it is, and it's happening without competition elsewhere. And there is a bit of a carrot and stick. I mean, it depends how the brave the city council wants to be, but you've got to give people a reason for coming back off Pride Park, yeah? Where they might think that they can park for nothing. I mean, we've got a whole thing going on with the 
uh, rapid transport and the green uh, agenda. Uh, and it's trying to knit that in uh, as well, but actually give people a carrot to come back. Perhaps they want to be really brave and start looking at, um, you know, additional business rate holidays. There's lots of things that can be done. Yeah. But the mix of uses that we're proposing is all about getting the footfall. Going yeah. back to what you said, Helen, when you've got people walking around the streets, not only does the place feel safer because there's people there during the day and in the evenings, but shops thrive, cafes thrive, restaurants thrive, mm -hmm. and then the culture that's on the side of it. So going to an arena for something to, to, to for night's entertainment, you then won't may stay on into, into the city. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you, you, you made an interesting point there, Paul, about the crime and safety as well, and sort of the, the fact that the place is more animated, it will drive, um, you know, uh, almost some of the antisocial behaviour and crime issues that, that we see on the streets of St Peter's Court today, uh, St Peter's Court today, yeah. sort of hopefully fall away. I mean, Ash, Ashley, you, you, you're you sort of one of the key issues, isn't it, for, for businesses within St Peter's Court of the crime and safety issues. Uh, how do you think that will play out once Beckett Well is full sort of uh, starting to, to move into its fully occupied status? Well, I think, I mean, there's a couple of ways you can sort of address the crime and social behaviour. One is to sort of address it at the ground level with, you know, resources, etc. And the second way you can do it really is to bring a brighter future to the city centre and people start dispersing. Uh, we've already seen during, during uh, the COVID that uh, footfall is really important to the city. Mm. Uh, and if you bring more people into the city, um, you know, your crime will reduce as people enjoy it for, for what it is. And I think it's a really exciting time for St. Peter's Quarter to be able to look beyond almost the day-to-day -day operations um, to, to a, a very exciting future, particularly over the next five years, with uh, the Beckett World Development, but also things like Nightingale Quarter, uh, Castle Ward, different phases, uh, the Eastern Gateway work, uh, you know, all four corners of St. Peter's Quarter. There's some serious, uh, seriously big investment going on, and uh, you know businesses have really got an opportunity to tap into this now. Yeah, uh, interesting question come through um, from um, one of the one of the audience saying that um, that that this this development is going to go ahead with or with or without the bid, and of course we're in the renewal stage of the bid. Um, and uh, interestingly enough, um, quite legitimately saying, if the bid is voted through, how do you see us adding to the project? Um, which is due to be uh, completed in the next three or four years of, of a, sort of the next bid's life. I mean, Helen, how do you see the bid adding adding to this? I think um, uh, it's, that's a very big question at this stage. It is, isn't it? <laughs> uh, um, uh, I, uh, I think the, the bid as a whole um, uh, adds massively to, to the area. If you think yeah, the back to the beginning of your, uh, your your opening, where you know we were described as the bit in the middle. Uh, you know there was a cathedral quarter and into, and, and but that's what we were. Where, whereas this um, uh, this development, along with all the others that I just uh, just mentioned, will make us the heart of the city, the city centre. And I think yeah, that's the way we have to think. And and the bid <coughs> can help um, in lots of lots of ways with engagement with uh, the. Um, uh, the, the, the businesses to provide various forms of entertainments um, like we, we have in the past um, and uh, engagement with the council and you know and Paul himself and, and all the people all the other stakeholders involved in this uh, business so that we get in our area uh, uh, as much of the stuff that we want um, you know we, we can we can drive the the process and the decisions um, through to a, a one voice which individually as businesses uh, and, and retail outlets we can't do. Um, I can't go to the council and knock on the door and, and, and say hang on a minute you know I think we need a tree there uh, for example um, uh, but the bid can um, and that's the beauty of, of, of having the bid it does give us that that that, that big voice um, and everybody has the opportunity to to form the conversations that we uh, that we have. Uh, yeah. Paul, I I think, I th sorry, I, th I think mm. now more than ever, if ever the question was being asked about a renewal, now is the most important time that you mm. are renewed, because at long last things are happening. Okay. And going back to what you said, Helen, if, if it wasn't renewed and then you're all individual voices, 
you're not going to be heard. Whereas the opportunities that, you know, that the whole point of doing regeneration, that it creates opportunities for all in the surrounding area. But to get what you need, you need to be united. So I, 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 you know, I, I think it's absolutely the right thing. Now is the time you need to be. Yes, I agree. Well, uh, and, and Alan, you've been pretty involved, uh, and as has Ashley, haven't you, in the in actually focusing attention on Beckett Well to, to, to get to this point anyway. And already, you know, yeah. the, the bids have played a key part, haven't they, in actually initiating this yeah, no, de definitely. I think yeah, uh, Ashley and myself uh, attend many, many meetings uh, with our St Peter's Quarter hats on. Uh, you know where, where we are uh, promoting uh, the the regeneration of this area, and there's lots of things that we've you know, we've achieved uh, quietly behind the behind the scenes, um, uh, which yeah, you know, not cost anything apart from uh, my time. It's you know to 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 to, to push through. Um, some of the regeneration that's already happened has been a direct result of the things that yeah, yeah. we've talked about. Uh, and uh, yeah, it, I, I echo entirely what Paul said. You know, now is the time where we can act as one voice. Uh, and yeah, the board um, uh, reflects um, uh, all areas of, of the St. Peter's Quarter bid uh, and um, you know, all forms of, of, of business. You know, if, if uh, someone feels passionate uh, about the area and about the bits, then, you know, join us on the board, uh, join us on the steering groups, uh, uh, you know, uh, for, for this next bit and help us form the St. Peter's Quarter that we want. I mean, but Paul, there'll be quite a lot of business opportunities, won't there, for, for businesses to move into this area? I mean, mm -hmm. roughly, any, sort of how many different tenants do you think there may be from a commercial oh, perspective? I mean, the, the, there is... <sighs> Within the scheme itself, so you've got you've got a, I mean, it, 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 it is fluid because, as I said, we will follow the market. Yeah. So, um, you know, there is over a quarter million square feet of commercial space, commercial being being office or um, yeah. serviced or, or tech office, um, but around uh, where we where we've got this area that's knitting back into the historic area or onto green lane there's some fantastic buildings so we through our purchase of the Debenham site we've inherited three buildings on green lane and then we've got the what they called the old stables um at the back of what was deb's into our summer hill yard and then we've got a new building there it, 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 there, there are <coughs> excuse me there are lots of opportunities more importantly, it's looking at the, those streets and roads around that already have, you know, you've got, you've got occupiers, but you've got vacancy. It's getting the vacancy, it's attracting new businesses. Um, I think so one of your slides actually, and was again, this refocusing, this idea of cottage industry as well. Yeah. Um, people have got used to going, uh, I can do something myself, I'll have a go. It's very much the entrepreneurial spirit. So whether they come into one of our buildings, that'd be lovely, but I'd be just as delighted if they're taking a, spare, a unit which is on is on Green Lane or is on Macklin Street. It's all good for the area. That's, you know, yeah. um, and I think that's where the opportunities lie. And, I, and actually, I would have thought that as, as a bid, one of the, the key roles that the, the bid will play is, is helping to bring the businesses, the occupiers of this new development scheme together and in turn knitting them together with the businesses of St Peter's Quarter as a whole and, and, and adding to that. Yeah, absolutely. Because, uh, you know, bids bring people together and, and you can't isolate certain sections of the town, you know, through the community aspect. Businesses have a, an opportunity to not not to be passive these things you know happen to them but to get involved and and that's the beauty of the renewal process in that we want feedback from businesses about what they want St Peter's Quarter to be you know we want to hear what the issues are for businesses now but we also want to hear from you as to what you think St Peter's Quarter as a whole can be going forwards for the next five ten years plus yeah yeah so some radically innovative um, things may well come out of this already. You know, the, the, the sort of, as Paul's saying, sort of the make and trade idea, the cottage industries. Um, Paul, as part of this, this is a very historical site. Um, I'm guessing that there's going to be some archaeological uh, exploration before the actual building starts. Do you, is there any way or opportunities for sort of um, referencing the heritage? You talked about the curved building echoing the old Debenhams building on the corner of Victoria Street or any other 
sort of references? Well, I, I, I'm not going to make a terrible pastiche of a well, if that's what <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, There has been mentioned that the wellhead is somewhere and we're trying to track that down. And that would be quite nice if we can get hold of it to put it back into, probably into somewhere in the yard. Might look very nice. Yeah. Uh, we're doing, I mean, in terms of the archaeological, there is a dig um, and some trials going on uh, on the Deb site. Um, to be fair, on a lot of the others, the previous uh, developments have gone and taken so much away that I don't suspect, I mean, we, we, hopefully we will find bits, bits and pieces, but um, yeah, I, interestingly that the, the name Summerhill Yard uh, was originally there. There was a Summerhill right. Lane. So we've tried, we've looked back at the historic fabric and the, and the old street skate, uh, skate to try to respect that and bring something back again. Um, at the same time, uh, and I think this is what's quite nice about it, with it being such a large site and with the, the being the, the conservation area on one side, you also want to go on the other as we're moving through the site toward the arena and be, um, uh, you know, feel confident in what your new build is going to be as well, which is why I joked about a pastiche that um, we've had plenty of um, time talking to uh, you know, the consultation in the past with heritage, etc. Nobody wants to respect the heritage more than we do, on certain, which, which we, we will do on the lower scale. But at the same time, we'd like to be uh, forward thinking and, and bold in terms of what we're bringing forward yeah. for the 21st century on the remainder. This has got to change. It's got this. I, get, I do get so impassioned about this because it's not very often when you can get this much of an area of a city where it is truly transformational. And yeah. what you said at the beginning that you actually felt you were just this bit up here, you actually now are going to be right at the heart of it. And how fantastic is that? Yeah. You know, the opportunity yeah. is, is, is a once in a lifetime, really. Yeah, it is. It is. Thank you very much, uh, Paul, Helen, and Ashley. It's um, it is a thing. You can't actually um, <laughs> make enough of a statement about it. It is uh, uh, exciting. It's actually an understatement almost. It's it is going to be transformational. So, uh, if anyone has got uh, in the audience that uh, has got any further questions for um, Helen and Paul and Ashley at any time, then please don't don't hesitate to contact the uh, the bid team, and uh, we'll do our best to uh, to pick those up. So it just leaves me to uh, to wrap the, this morning's sessions up. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Helen, Paul and Ashley for um, coming onto the panel and uh, Paul for your very exciting presentation. So I, I hope you've all found uh, this interesting. Um, I think it's, uh, it's giving some real boost to the future of Derby as a whole. Um, and as we all move forward, <clears throat> excuse me, both through the recovery from the pandemic and the emergence of the new city centre, this is going to be an ideal time for shaping a new business plan, as uh, Paul and uh, Helen and Ashley were just saying, you know, this is an ideal time really to be reviewing the, the business plan and making sure that it's fit for the next five years. There will be a number of opportunities for you to all get involved in shaping the plan. Uh, there are surveys that are already online uh, on the BID website. There'll be one-to-one -one sessions. Uh, there's opportunities to join working groups over the next few weeks um, and, and have your say and, uh, and help shape that plan. The plan will be finalised in September this year. I'm going to the ballot in November. So please keep your eyes out for any, uh, well, all, any information and all events and opportunities. Uh, if you want to uh, make sure that you don't miss out, and receive our SPQ renewal e bulletins as well. Please contact Ashley or Daniela in the bid team. Thank you everyone for attending this morning uh, and for your input and questions. Please keep safe and start to look forward to an exciting period in Derby's life um, in the future. Uh, thank you very much.